Joined right now by Port Moody Panthers General Manager Peter Zerbinas. Uh, Peter, thanks very much for doing this. It's a busy week coming up, I know, for your club. Yes, it is, Brian, and thanks for having me on. Uh, so you've got a new coach now, Dave McLellan, uh, announced as the bench boss for 2017-18 last week. Uh, was it important getting a new coach in place before the spring camp coming up this week? It was very important. I think uh, the coach has a lot of uh, input on the players that we select, and uh, when you sort of select players when you don't have a coach in place, it kind of uh, could lead down sort of the wrong path. So we wanted to make sure our, our coach was in place and it was the right coach. So we took our time doing that. But in the end, we did want him in place uh, for this camp. Now, when you talk about uh, the input that, that Dave might have in some of the players selected to either commit to or, or look at uh, bringing to main camp coming up later on in the summer, um, has there been any thought at this point put into assistant coaches? Uh, no, uh, you know we've we've uh, we've talked a little bit about assistant coaches, but we we haven't fully gotten into that yet. We have some names in mind that we're going to keep track of, uh, and then really consider hard uh, over this week, and then we'll make some decisions probably at the end of the week. How many candidates did you look at before deciding on on hiring Dave? Well, we had about I would say at least ten very strong candidates. Everything from uh, minor hockey uh, coaches that have done very well. And have uh, you know have won some championships or in, in uh, BC uh, hockey provincials, uh, but we also considered three or four that were in junior hockey as well. So uh, when we narrowed it down, we narrowed it down to three or four, and then from there we made that decision to hire Dave. What do you like about what he brings to the table? Well, he first of all he knows how to win. He's done that in the BC Hockey League. He's done that in our league as well. Uh, he's uh, probably one of the most hockey smart coaches that I've ever uh, dealt with myself in the last uh, 12 years that I've been sort of you know in and out of junior hockey Uh, so he's probably one of the most hockey knowledgeable guys can really implement the system Um, he likes gritty players that uh, will battle hard for pucks and that's you know and go to the net very hard and uh, finish finish checks and that's the kind of hockey that I like and that's what made us successful in Delta. So you alluded to that there. He was your coach in Delta. He, he was there from 2010 to 2013. H- has anything changed about him or his style since he was your coach there? Well, I think everybody, uh, the game of hockey evolves continuously throughout you know, every single year. So uh, as a coach, as a GM, uh, everybody in hockey evolves a bit. So uh, has he changed? Uh, yeah, I, I would think he's changed quite a bit. I mean, if you don't change with hockey, you're going to be left behind and uh, I myself have changed uh, from when I first started, so uh, for sure he, I'm, I'm very sure he's changed a little, you know, in his style and his uh, the way he approaches things. But uh, I think that's all for a positive. So you talked about him wanting to play a hard nosed style. Is there anything else that you can't that you can add about what type of coach that Dave is? Well, it's it's, it's going to be structured hockey. Uh, you know, he really puts really good systems in place. Uh, our penalty killing is, uh, I'm sorry, our power play will be very exciting, but you know, from uh, in years past, our, our penalty killing was just almost as exciting as our power play. Uh, you know, it's always a go, go, go and real pressure, a lot of pressure in everywhere, whether we're penalty killing, we're on the power play or, or we're just, uh, you know, a five on five hockey. It's all about pressure and, and uh, creating turnovers. So I, I think it'll be a very fun brand of hockey to watch come September. What do you feel, you talk about the, the hockey knowledge that Dave's got and being a, a solid strategist. What do you feel his strengths are? It, are those what his strengths are as a coach? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, he has the ability to really watch and break down what the other team is doing and finding uh, any weak points that they may have. Uh, adjusting our system of play right in the middle of the game, like even like shift to shift. Uh, and making those uh, quick ch- uh, transitions and, and changes that, that are required to to get the wins. And I, you know, I've seen him come up with uh, strategies right at the end of the game when we're down two goals, and you know, he comes out with a tie game or a victory uh, just off of end zone face off. So everything is planned, uh, and he's like a good strategist. So I think that'll help a lot. So since the last time you and I chatted in this forum, uh, you've had a chance to sit down with a lot of the returning players or eligible returning players uh, for the Panthers. What was the underlying message that you wanted to give those, those players? Well, uh, the underlying message was that we were going to get a, a very good coach in place uh, you know, as, as soon as possible, but there wasn't going to be a hurry. We were going to get the right person in place. And from then on, uh, things would change. You know, we would uh, 
slowly start to build a winning organization and that started not only with our players but our volunteers and and uh, everybody that you know participates it's going to be a new positive uh, look on uh, on that and with uh, winning in mind and so our, our fans should uh, expect a lot and our players should expect the same and we're going to expect uh, you know when we bring in those expectations the bar gets raised a lot and those players will have to rise to that bar. What was the underlying message that you got from those players? Um, they wanted more structure. Um, I thought uh, that was the underlying message from pretty much every single one of them. They wanted more structure. Uh, they wanted a more high-end coaching. And uh, so that was the reason why we took a little bit longer to get the right person in place. Uh, but uh, really, the, the number one thing was the, the structure part and getting you know a really strong uh, coach that's coached in junior hockey before and it has been very successful. All right, now let's switch gears to your spring camp coming up this weekend or this week at the Richmond Ice Center. Uh, how many players have you got coming? Well, we've got just under 80. That's four teams and pretty much it's a sellout. I think we have one spot left and uh, other than that, it's pretty much a sellout. And, you know, I, I've been doing this for about nine years now. And just looking at the players that we have coming out, it's going to be pretty exciting. There's some very, very high-end and good quality players. Uh, so we really look forward to, uh, to seeing them all compete for the spots that are going to be available on our team. Have you got players coming from all over? Pretty much. We have everywhere from Seaford Minor Hockey to Chilliwack to Mission, uh, to from two from the Sunshine Coast. Um, so we definitely have, uh, we've reached out to a lot of associations and you know, it's been a very positive uh, return on that. So, uh, yeah, there's players from everywhere, including, you know, our hometown in Port Moody and the tri-cities of Port Coquitlam and Coquitlam. There's a really good representation there, which is really important to us as well. Now, given that you've had so much experience in running camps like this, what's your overall goal for this one with the Panthers? Well, you know, for us, like, you know, and we talked about it with Dave, we don't really have, like, we like our players that are returning, but we don't really have attachments. So every spot is pretty much open for these uh, young fellows that are coming into our camp to show us something that's going to bring them to main camp and then hopefully steal a spot or take one of the empty spots that are going to be available in our camp. So uh, for, for me, it's just finding that diamond in the rust that, you know, that you really didn't really expect to step up and, and that person steps up during camp where he forces you to take to take him in uh, into main camp and then hopefully make the team. So uh, that's what I really enjoy is seeing the, the competition and also finding that diamond in the rough. When you're putting a roster together or looking at invites for main camp, how important is a camp like this in putting together the 2017-18 edition of the Panthers? It's very important. First of all, it signifies the beginning of the new season. So uh, that's number one. Number two, um, you know, the, it is so important because we know we're going to have spots to fill this year. We're going to have spots pretty much in all of our positions. So, you know, this is where we start off and we find, uh, you know, the young players that we want that are going to join our team. So, again, if they, they come out and they demonstrate a, a really good hard compete level, um, you know, and really go to the net hard, battle hard, uh, that's what we're going to be looking for. And that sort of sets the standard for our team for the rest of the season. You alluded to it a little bit, the fact that you didn't have a hand in putting together uh, last season's roster. Do you have any of the returning players who are eligible uh, coming out to the spring camp to, to show what they have to contribute? Definitely. So what we've done is we've uh, invited all our players out and there'll be a, a pretty good amount of players coming out uh, to participate, whether they'll be coaching a team, uh, just being around to answer questions that they, you know, our younger players may have to act as role models and ambassadors for our team. Uh, but also they might even get a chance to play. So we have a few spots that we've kept open and we want to put insert them in the lineup and they're not there to go and compete at that point. They're there to sort of set a standard for which we want other players to, to shoot for that are in our camp. And I think that's very important. Well, and I guess if they don't set that standard, then that's eye-opening for, for you guys as evaluators too, though. A hundred percent. But we wouldn't want them going out and, you know, and uh, hitting some younger player, you know, when they're not ready for it and that sort of thing. We want them to provide the speed, the energy, you know, the confidence, uh, you know, the part where if things aren't going right, the guy's on the bench and he might be able to, sort of, you know, pick up the younger player and, and, you know, and pick up his spirit sort of thing. So that's what we're looking for in our vets skating in those. 
Now, you talked about having open spaces for the upcoming season, even though you have so many eligible guys coming back. Really up front, Chase Thompson and Chong Min Lee are the only two not coming back to the team with uh, Chase aging out and Chong going up to Prince George to play for the Spruce Kings uh, in the BCHL. That's nine eligible guys to return on defense, uh, 10 up front, two goaltenders. Uh, Does that really paint a true picture, though, of what you envision with your roster for the upcoming season? Well, not really, because, you know, when you don't make the playoffs for five years, you know there's going to be some changes, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're going to have to make some improvements, and, you know, that's, it's a positive, but also it's a, it's, you know, a kind of a sad thing, because you know some of these players that are on your existing roster won't be around for next year, uh, come the opening game of the season, Uh, but, you know, again, that's not always a negative for a hockey team, Uh, there are spots, and like I said, when you don't succeed, you know, you have to make those changes, and, uh, that's what we're going to be looking at doing is improving the team to the best of our ability uh, to ensure that we're in the playoffs next year. Now, recruiting is absolutely fierce at almost every level of hockey. Uh, what can you do to make the Panthers uh, a more attractive option for players and their families? Because with this spring camp, it, it's certainly for some of these guys not the only camp that they're going to. No, for sure. It, it's a competition now between uh, teams and you know these players have options of where they can go. Uh, and uh, there's also players that you're going to try to recruit. Uh, for us, you know, one of our selling points is going to be our coach, who's a very experienced coach and has a lot of contacts in the BC Hockey League, a lot of contacts in universities uh, down in the States and here in Canada. So uh, that's a great selling feature for us because, you know, if a player wants to move forward, uh, Dave's got those contacts to help move them forward, whether it's in the BC Hockey League uh, or, you know, the basically with UBC, uh, SFU, and so on and so on. And a lot of American schools as well in his stint with uh, the BC Hockey League. And also connections uh, you know, outside of uh, having coached in the KIJHL. I would imagine that he's got some connections you know, on the east side of the Rockies too. Oh, 100%, for sure. All right, well, it uh, should be an exciting week of, of hockey and, and a good, uh, I guess, litmus test for you to sort of see uh, where the Panthers are at and, and looking forward to bringing in some bodies for the 2017-18 season. Peter Zerbinas, the general manager of the Port Moody Panthers. Peter, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate the time.